Hi there. Well, um, welcome to uh, the third tutorial in this series on uh, Mandel Bulbo 1.15. Uh, I seem to have a little bit of momentum, so I thought I would uh, uh, keep going. Um, the format of this one is going to be slightly different in that I'm not going to be spending so much time in the software itself, but I'm going to talk a little bit about the um, kind of some sort of some best practice and some some of the ways I work that will help me kind of uh, certainly over the last couple of years progress quicker in learning how to use the software. Um, I'm going to start off um, with my usual credit to uh, the uh, creator of Mandel Bulba, Christoph. Uh, I thought I'd show you his DeviantArt page. Uh, actually, um, some relatively recent images, this one uh, particularly, uh, certainly from this year, um, <laughs> which is pretty stunning. Um, I'm guessing it's created using the newer version of Mandel Bulba, because I haven't got a clue how he's done that. Um, nevertheless, it's very cool. Um, I'll also briefly mention in the last sort of week or so since I last uh, did a tutorial, um, I've done three more animations which you can find on my um, YouTube, other YouTube page. Um, they're all worth a look. Uh, and certainly we'll look at animations again um, for a future video. Um, okay, straight to it. The thing I'm going to go over in this uh, instance is um, the uh, process I use for batching up um, configurations. So rather than uh, create uh, a configuration, let it render, see how it looks, create another configuration, let it render, and so on, what I tend to do is I'll configure a batch of, um, uh, of fractals at low res, and then I'll run a batch file which will process them all sometimes overnight or sometimes over a longer period, um, bearing in mind that some of these fractals can sometimes take, you know, <laughs> 6, 12, uh, even occasionally 18 hours. Um, the reason I sort of wanted to bring this up as much as anything was because, um, you know, there's no silver bullet to learning how to do this. Um, by far, the best way you're going to learn how to use this software is just to practice, to tweak things, to experiment, to um, try and find sort of new options. That's the way you'll develop a style, that's the way you'll um, get a feeling for the software. Uh, and it really is, you know, getting a feeling for it is very important. So there's no shortcuts, you just end up configuring and rendering lots and lots of fractals. Um, but obviously, you can increase the rate of iteration of that process if you configure batches and then render batches. Uh, and that's what I'm going to show you. And also to address um, one of the commenters uh, questions, they were asking about the IFS fractal type. I'm going to use that as the example here. So I'm going to quickly do a batch and then we're going to um, render and then I'm going to show you how to configure the batch file uh, to render it. So I'm going to go to fractal type, kaleidoscopic, IFS there. I'm going to do, go through the usual process. I'm going to sort of normalize my view angle. I'm going to move to an exterior viewpoint. There's nothing showing at the moment. For some reason, when you start off with this kaleidoscopic IFS, if you go to if it's the engine here, you'll see um, maximum render distance is defaulted to zero. Um, that obviously means that there's nothing showing. So I'm going to boost that up to 100. Uh, and I'm also going to see that this particular factor type has got its own tab for configuration. So I'm going to choose, I'm going to keep this in time, I'm going to choose the dodecahedron there. You'll see it pre populates all of this stuff. And then I'm going to Reset the view. So there we've got the shape. It's a really nice one actually, and it's worth playing with. I'm going to do a couple of other things. I'm going to update the background colors, and make it a bit darker. Mm -hmm. 
like so, and I'm going to also pick a palette from the archive. This doesn't really matter because I haven't. <laughs> Uh, as, since this is essentially just an example, I oh, know there's one quite like this one. Okay, so I'll go in there and boost up the color speed a bit so I get a bit more variety in the color range that's displaying. That's much better. Right. So, I will, one thing I didn't do was reduce the render size, so configuration, rendering at low res, much quicker. We'll do that. So, next thing, what I will tend to do is create a folder to put all of these configuration files. And I've actually already done that. So, if I go to load setting, uh, sorry, save settings, uh, I'll actually put it into my pictures folder here. You can see I've got a test folder for tutorial. So, there. Now you can see I've already created four images there. Um, I'm going to do the next one is going to be number four, uh, and then I'm going to tweak. So let's do a tweak. Let's say change that to minus ten. I'll tweak that. Change the color range a little bit. Save that. You just go through this process, you can figure, you know, 10, 15, 20 factors this way, um, just with tweaking. Let's do another one. You can understand why tweaking would uh, be helpful in learning, because you see, you know, a completely range of different options on screen. Let's change the angle on that one slightly. Then you get the results through the batch at the end of it. Um, do that as well. So as I say, you can, you know, you can go through this process a number of times. Um, you know, one of the reasons why through learning to use the software, it's useful to see high resolution renders is because it doesn't always work out like you think it's going to. Um, an image rendered at a low resolution can be completely different at high resolution. Um, so again, you need to get a feel for sort of what impact the resolution size that your the ultimate resolution size you're rendering on is going to have. Well, I don't particularly like that. So I'm, so I'm going to revert in this case to one of the other ones, to so this one here. You can see, I'll just make another tweak to this one and say that. So let's say change that. And save that one too. Right. Um, so if I go and look at the folder, it's down here. Uh, pictures. Wait, one one. Pictures. You'll see I've got all of the configuration files. Once you've done, once you've done that. You're also going to create a batch file. So I'm going to edit this and I'll just show you what they look like and briefly go through it. This is about yourself, simply a text text file. Um, first line of it essentially calls Mandel Bulba. Um, there's a little bit of nuance here. If you're working in a 64-bit um, environment, as I am, um, you're going to need to include x86 into there. <coughs> the reason being that um, the, in the folder hierarchy Mandelbulba gets installed in, in this folder um, for uh, a 64 bit and without that from 32 bit version. Um, you can see here what we've got is the call is start Mandelbulba without the user interface in low memory mode. Now low memory mode probably isn't so interesting for um, 
uh, this sort of resolution, but certainly for higher resolutions, you'll need to do it. Otherwise, your computer's just going to crash unless you've got a, a lot of RAM. Um, this is the actual resolution that we're going to be rendering at, and you'll see there's the call there. This needs to be lowercase, so I'm actually make that change uh, here. And I already failed, and tried and failed at high res, so uh, replace. Sorry, at, um, so you can see 4000 times 3000. It defines the format, which is JPEG in my case. You've got the file. So what it does is it runs through that operation, renders that image, and then moves on to the next one. Um, so I'm going to save that. Save as I call it batch file test three. And you call it. You always end it with dot bat like so. Save. Um, as you can see, it that's now saved in there. The final step to this is to um, copy this set of files into a very particular folder, and it's the um, um, Mamba Volvo user folder. Uh, so I'm going to just show you how to get there. You need to go to go to the top level of your PC. Um, it's typically going to be in your user identity here. So this is in mine. You'll see there's a Mandelbulb folder there. The one we need to put it into is the settings. So I'm going to copy those into there. Some of them are already in. Um, you see we've got now got all of those test folders. We should have the batch file as well. So that's the batch file I'm interested in. And if you just double click that, You'll see in the background you get the bulb running away and rendering like so. Um, I hope that's helpful. Uh, certainly, it should make you more productive. You can leave, you know, a batch of images to be rendering overnight. Um, you've got more of a reference point. When you go back and look at them, you can sort of make tweaks and stuff like that. Um, thank you very much.